When you see a man, you know, one day I walked into a certain place and I saw lots of deviants in that place. People were actually prostrating to a grave. They were going around the grave and they were asking the man in the grave certain things. And one man told me there is no even man in the grave. He told me some long story of what is in that grave. There is no, no man inside there. And I'm saying, Ya Allah, guide these people. Somehow, guide these people. You know, the man who was driving the taxi was one of them. And I happened to talk to him because he saw me. He said, why are you very angry? I told him, I wanted to see what these people are doing. I've learned a lot from going inside. But these people, they don't realize that Islam means to worship Allah alone. That is the meaning of Islam. To worship Allah alone. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encapsulates Islam. That encapsulates Islam. And they are calling out to the dead. Subhanallah. So he said, but what is wrong? I said, you cannot do that. Because you are risking your whole existence. He told me, no, but you know, I have been and sometimes my problem is solved and so many things have happened. Because I said, you know what? Shaitan sometimes will lead you on. So your problem is solved and you think it was done by this and by that. That is the test from Allah. And Shaitan is playing in the mind. What we definitely need to know. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. What we definitely need to know. When a person is deviant, in that way, and this is what I asked him, do you consider it compulsory to call out on the grave? He said, no, it's just voluntary, not compulsory. I said, we consider it compulsory to call out to Allah alone. So why don't you just leave that, call out to Allah? Because common sense, if a person is calling out to a grave, ask him, is it compulsory to call out to this grave? He'll say, no, it is voluntary. It's a good deed. Now that answer is wrong, but at least he's saying voluntary, meaning I do not have to do this. So you tell him that all of us believe that it's compulsory to call out to Allah and you're not allowed to do this. So who is risking what? If you call out to Allah, are you doing something wrong? He will tell you no. So why are you risking it? Why do you want to do something that half of the world is going to tell you that you are wrong? Rather do something that you also admit that it's correct. I hope you are seeing the logic in what I'm saying. This man says, you are right. It makes a lot of sense. Then I took it a step further. I said, now you need to correct your heart to believe that that is wrong. To believe that to call out to that grave is wrong. Now I want to ask you a question, getting back to our topic of peace. The question is, if I was not prepared to talk to him in a respectful way, and if I was just going to tell him, you are like this, you are like that, and I turn the other way and spit in his face, was there going to be any luck? No luck, no, no chance. Why? Because the hatred, go back to the verse I read moments ago, where we said, if you were harsh and hard hearted, they would have dispersed away. But be calm, be cool, be relaxed, be at peace. Yes, you have a flame in you. You want to actually give the message to the others, but do it in a calm way. And you need to know you might not see results in one day or in one year or in 10 years. It might come later, but you need to sow the seeds of the goodness. So there is no point in going out and creating hatred and starting to swear people. Swearing is not from our deen. No. Calm down, cool it, relax. Maybe you don't understand the system and the way to reach out to the hearts and minds of others by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us. So people are sometimes not at peace because they have not known how to speak to those they disagree with. They have not known. You know, I'm coming from Makkah al Mukarramah and I share with you a message that we had in Makkah. The conference was regarding certain issues facing the Muslim Ummah. And one of the top scholars of Bosnia, the former Mufti of Bosnia, he made a remark. And I have to share this with you because it's Amana. Amana meaning it's a trust. He said, you know, several years ago in Bosnia, the enemy was attacking us and we were, a lot of us were wiped out. I'm sure you know the war in Bosnia in the 90s, 
took place. He says that was bearable. Why was it bearable? Because the enemy was attacking us and the whole ummah was behind us. Listen carefully. The enemy was attacking us and the whole ummah was behind us. So that was bearable. It was tough, but Alhamdulillah, we managed by the help of Allah. It was bearable. But today it is unbearable because the ummah itself is killing us. Did you hear the point? There is no more outside enemy and the ummah behind you. There is no one behind you. Why? Because the ummah itself is torn into pieces. Each one is killing the other. How can we think that that is part of Islam? How can we begin to even imagine for a moment that that is part of an Islamic teaching? To be violent. Where is that from? Where did it come from? Allahu Akbar. Just because I have a difference with you, I must be violent. That is not Islam. Go and study Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's life. See what he has taught. He taught peace. He promoted peace. Today we are citizens of this beautiful country. It is your duty to promote peace. It is your duty to ensure that when people look at the Muslims, they look at icons of peace, icons of stability, tranquility, harmony, help one another. People will turn to the deen in thousands and thousands. But the minute we become known as people who are violent, people who do not have any patience, people who are arrogant and they swear What type of peace are we going to have in our own homeland? We will have disaster and chaos. We would have sown the seeds of dissent even within our own children because we would have taught them when you disagree with someone, swear him, fight him, and if you can, eradicate him. Where is that? Where is that from? That is from shaitan. The nafs, the nafs, the soul that we have in us, sometimes we overreact and we think it is part of the deen when it is not. Wallahi, the disasters that are on the globe, it is our duty to ensure that we speak about it, to educate the young and the old and all the Muslim and non-Muslim to say, listen, my brothers and sisters, it is important for us to live in harmony and peace. We will spread our deen. We will spread the goodness in a beautiful way. It is their right also to talk about their own faiths. That is why we are all part and parcel of this particular country, for example, where this type of freedom is enjoyed by all. I really plead with you. I really plead with you. And I encourage myself also to utter words that promote peace, to utter words that promote harmony. Even if I disagree with you, my brother, you are my brother.